Hello everyone, my name is John Soule, Solutions Architect with AWS. In this video, I will show how to connect to an Amazon FSx for Windows file server file share using the TCP protocol support of AWS Verified Access. So let's dive right in. There are some prerequisites for the rest of the video. If you are following along with hands-on keyboard, Pause the video until you launch a single AZ-1 deployment of an Amazon FSx for Windows file server and an AWS Verified Access instance. At the time of this video, AWS Verified Access only supports the single AZ-1 deployment of FSx for Windows file server, so make sure it's a single AZ-1 deployment of FSx. Also, make sure you deploy FSx and AWS Verified Access in the same region. Once you deploy the prerequisites, you will have a deployment architecture similar to this. There will be an FSx Windows file server deployed in a single availability zone and an AWS Verified Access instance configured with a trust provider. In this case, the trust provider is IAM Identity Center. In the rest of the video, I will show how to configure AWS Verified Access to allow secured access to the FSx file share by a remote user. This is an overview of the steps. The first step is to create the AWS Verified Access, or AVA, endpoint. You can choose to use the CIDR range endpoint or the network interface endpoint, or both. After the endpoints are configured, you then download the connectivity client to your laptop and configure it to access your AVA instance. Finally, you test to make sure you can access the FSx file share. First, I'll create an AVA CIDR range endpoint. The advantage of a CIDR range endpoint is that AVA will discover all the active IP addresses in the CIDR range, so you don't have to create an endpoint for each resource in the CIDR range. To create a new verified access endpoint, just navigate to the VPC console and then go to verified access endpoint and then select Create Verified Access Endpoint. First, we'll create a CIDR endpoint. Select the group that you created when you created the Verified Access Instance. We'll select the TCP protocol to access FSx. And then we'll select the VPC which is um, associated with the FSx server. To find that VPC, we'll go to the FSx system um, information and go to the network and security section and you will see the, the VPC information. Now, with four endpoint types, select network CIDR. Now for the CIDR range, we will need the CIDR range of the subnet in which uh, FSx was deployed. To find that, we'll go to the network and security section again, go to subnet, and then we'll go to the subnet information. And when you select that, you'll be able to see the CIDR range of that subnet. So we'll just copy that. And for the port range, the default port range for SMB access to FSx is 445. And then we will select the subnet for that um, FSx server, which we saw here. And then we will need the security group associated with the FSx uh, server. To find that, we need to go back to the network and security information, find the network uh, interface for that server. And we found that network um, interface and 
you'll see the security group information right here within the network interface information. And select a net, uh, security group for that network interface. Now the access policies, um, you could add a, a access policy here or you could add it at the group level. The access policy determines who and what can access uh, the FSX server. Here we'll use um, what was created um, and deployed to your uh, group. Then once you're done, you, create, uh, you select Create Verified Access Endpoint. For convenience, I've already created one for the CIDR. And let's examine some of the information. Here you'll see the Verified Access Endpoint. You'll see the um, access instance ID and the group ID, the security group that you selected. And then what you'll need to be able to connect is the domain names. And I'll go over this when we test the actual connectivity. Next, I will create a network interface endpoint. If you only want to expose a single resource through AVA, the network interface endpoint is a good option. Remember, you can choose to create a CIDR range endpoint or the network interface endpoint or both. You only need one endpoint to access FSX through AVA. To create a verified access endpoint for the ENI, go back to your VPC console and then um, select your verified access endpoint and select create verified access endpoint and give it a name. and go through the steps that you went through to create the CIDR range endpoint. Select the VPC. Then we'll select the network interface endpoint. Now we want to select the network interface which is associated with uh, the file server. So we found it here. Within, this is again the network and security section of the file system. And the security group for that file system, which we found before, just by opening that up. And here again is the security group information. And then after we're done with that, um, you can add the tag if you wish. And then we'll cre hit Create Verified Access Endpoint. So again, for convenience sake, I created one previously. And we can examine some of the information for the ENI endpoint. So you have the same metadata, the um, access endpoint ID, the instance ID, the group ID, the security group. Uh, one thing to note is that you do not see the domain names tab within the information. And that's because there is only one resource for an ENI endpoint type, whereas for the CIDR type, there are multiple resources. Now that we have the AVA endpoints created, we use the connectivity client to access the endpoints. The connectivity client provides a secure connection to the endpoint and establishes a security context for the connection so that AVA can make authorization decisions. So to install the connectivity client, you go to the AWS Verified Access documentation page, select connectivity client, ensure that you have the prerequisites met, and then download the connectivity client for your operating system. Here I'm using the connectivity client for Mac with Apple Silicon. And then once you download the package installer and install the connectivity client, then you export the client configuration file. Now to do that, you go to your verified access console, select verified access instance, 
and then under actions select export client configuration now here you want to save the client configuration at the root of your drive so under root library and under application support their connectivity client so most uh, users on a Macintosh will have a, um, a library under the user directory um, you don't want that you want the library at the root so after saving the client configuration file you can now launch the connectivity client to connect to your verified access instance Now that we've installed and configured the connectivity client, let's test the connection to FSX. I will demonstrate how to use both the CIDR and network interface endpoints to connect to the FSX file share from my laptop. So now let's test connectivity from the laptop to the FSX file share through AWS Verified Access. To do this, we have to first connect to the AWS Verified Access instance using the, the connectivity client. So we'll click sign in and this will open up a browser to authenticate against your trust provider. In this case, we used IAM Identity Center. And once we authenticate, it will allow the connectivity client to connect. Now, while the connectivity client is connecting, we will need one key piece of information, which is the domain name of the verified access endpoint. So using the ENI uh, endpoint, we find the endpoint domain name here. So we'll just copy that. And then after connect connecting to the verified access uh, instance via the uh, connectivity client, we can then now go to the finder and connect to the server. So we'll use the SMB protocol and then paste in the domain name and the default name of the share is share and then we will connect. Now after we connect to the FSX file share it will ask you to authenticate against the Active Directory uh, server that you set up. So when you set up the Active Directory server you should have created an admin user and we'll use the admin user to connect. So now that we've connected, we are now connected to the file share. And you can access it uh, in the finder under the network section. And let's create a new folder here. We'll call it test folder and then we will check it check if that test folder exists when we try the CIDR endpoint so let's disconnect for now and then let's configure the CIDR endpoint so the domain name for the CIDR endpoint is found under domain names now remember that with site with the CIDR range endpoint it will discover all the active IP addresses within that CIDR range. So you'll likely have a multiple number of IP addresses and domain names. So what we will do is go back to the file system or, and then identify the IP address, which is blurred out here for security reasons, but we'll copy that. And then we will find the IP address that it is associated with, which is that. And that is the domain name for that file server. So we will connect again using the CIDR endpoint. And we'll, we will authenticate using the admin user that we created previously. So 
So now we are connecting via the CIDR endpoint and let's see if the test folder that we created is exists and it does. So here we demonstrated that we can connect to the FSX file server from our laptop through Amazon verified access. And we demonstrated both the CIDR and the ENI endpoints. This concludes the video on how to connect to an FSX for Windows file share using AWS Verified Access. Thank you for your time and attention. Please contact AWS if you would like to learn more.